Hi, my name is Brad Perkins. I'm the president and CEO of Cascadia High Speed Rail. Go to the next slide, please. That's really our choice, isn't it, these days? Um, do we continue with the freeways or we think of a better way, faster way, more equitable way to get to where we need to go? Next slide, please. What we're talking about is a huge area here uh, between Eugene and, and Vancouver, BC uh, to have a very efficient, fast running, we're talking 250 miles per hour here, of a train that would connect all the communities in between, as you can see. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Back again, is this what we want? Does, do we want to continue with this kind of lifestyle? Okay. Eighth place for congestion in the United States. That's where Portland's at. Seattle's not far behind. They're at 14th. So what we're really competing with is, is uh, the, the local um, projects that are going on right here in Portland. We got a Columbia River bridge crossing that's being discussed, talking about $4.5 billion there. We're talking about widening the freeway down by the Rose Quarter. That's another billion dollars. And then the Southwest Quarter, that's another 2.8 billion. That's over $8 billion in, in um, highway work. And we are right here uh, offering another alternative. We're right in the middle of doing an EIS study for our corridor. They would both have uh, the option to have a commuter run on it as well as inner city runs and including uh, the option of having the um, parcel freight being moved on the same corridor uh, in the times in which we're not uh, commuting people or using it uh, for people. Go ahead. Again, here's, here's our choice. Um, the productivity of being on a high-speed rail train versus in a car and not being very limited as to what you can do. Next slide, please. First of all, let me just say a little bit about myself uh, before we get into the facts about this. I've been uh, doing this kind of work, um, working on leadership role, land use planning, housing, bike trail, high-speed rail planning. I've spent a considerable amount of time influencing the direction of newly designed high-speed rail corridor with local, state, national leaders and officials. Here you have a rundown of uh, where we're at right now as to our environmental impact statement study. The whole corridor is 460 miles between Eugene and Vancouver, BC. And the 218 miles uh, study area between Wilsonville, Oregon and Everett, basically between Portland and Seattle, Washington. Power source is all electrified, 25,000 K power line with a catenary above, okay? And we'll be using of not fossil fuel, we'll be using renewable energy sources. Speeds, the commuter run, the CCE, will have up to 110 miles per hour possibilities and six minutes to Vancouver nonstop. Vancouver, Washington, that is. And then the sea ice, which is the inner city run, will have speeds over 250 miles an hour. That means we can get to Seattle from Portland in 58 minutes. Okay, it's double track via tunnels, flyovers on the ground. And our corridors that's been laid out for that, for each specific type of uh, rail uh, is signified in our, in our 15 years worth of work trying to discover or determine what's the best corridor to use, okay. The corridor will be exclusively exclusively used for moving uh, commuter long distance travelers and lightweight freight. Crossings, uh, there will be no crossings for uh, motor vehicles, uh, bikes and pedestrians that they will either will have to go under the tracks or over, okay. The uh, funding will be what we feel is a good chance that these major uh, lightweight freight companies would be interested in, 
in uh, investing in what we're trying to do here. So we're estimating that 50 to 80% will be funded privately and the other 50% by the public. It would be built privately. Corridor owners would be um, the public and private joint owners. Okay. The big question though, is why we're trying to uh, do this, why we're trying to build it. It's a new safe and fast transportation system in America to move people and goods. It is nearly pollution and congestion free while stimulating unlimited development and growth. How did it all begin? It began in Japan about 57 years ago called the Shinkansen high-speed rail system. It was built for uh, 1964 Olympics in Tokyo. Okay. And since then, moving billions of people, I think the estimates are around 10 billion people so far on their system in Japan, they have had not one fatality. And yet in America, we have 40,000 fatalities per year from traffic accidents. What is the difference between what we have spent and what China is spending today on high-speed rail? Well, every year they spend about 115 billion on high-speed rail. Uh, and they have 40,000 miles of tracks that will be in, in operation by 2028. That compares to zero dollars spent on high-speed rail here in America. Since 1949, federal funds spent two trillion, that's again, two trillion dollars on highways and 777 billion on aviation. American government and private interests need to work together to fund and build a new transportation system that is not called Amtrak. Yeah, there's a big difference. We can't do the two-two train model for our future. Okay, we can't just do improvements to Amtrak and think this is what people want or use. Okay, this is a completely different system. Next slide, please. We fit right there in the middle between uh, what we have today as far as local transport. You know, we've got the buses, we got light rail, bikes, walking. Um, and then we have on the other end, airplane travel. Okay, We fit right within that 100 to 1500 mile area. That is the best way to get around. That slide pitch. And why is it the best? Well, you can see right here. Uh, four major points that uh, we feel we far outweigh other systems. These, it's the energy solution, it's the climate solution, safety solution, and we actually do relieve congestion. Here in Portland, we feel that once the system is built, uh, we can relieve 30% uh, to 35% of the congestion on our freeways, uh, I-5 in particular. Next slide, please. Okay, here we are looking at uh, just taking 1,000 people from point A to point B and comparing, you know, one train of 1,000 people moving 200 miles per hour versus stuck on the roads and not knowing what, what time you're actually going to get there uh, because of congestion. Next slide, please. Capacity. Uh, what are we talking about as far as capacity? Well, you know, it takes nine airplanes to move 1,100 people and passengers. How long does it take once you get, you know, all set up in, 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 the, uh, in the plane? It takes one hour to load, taxi, and then take off, basically. And we, from a train centered in the central city, once, once you're through and in, on the train, you, know, you can leave in five minutes. Big difference. Next slide, please. And then you just uh, compare the uh, one unit of energy to you know how many kilometers you can go. You can see the, the difference there, 170 kilometers with high-speed rail versus um, uh, regional train, uh, 52 uh, kilometers. <clears throat> so uh, what are we... What are we getting at? Um, we have been working on this, like I said, for 15 years, okay? And we have uh, paid particular attention to the minimum, minimum cur curvature, uh, less than 2% elevation uh, changes, 
ground material type and station location to determine the best corridor, either on ground, above ground, or underground. We got it all mapped out. We had a great engineer, Rudy Niederberger, has been working with us on this. Um, what we have resulted in is a 250 mile per hour corridor with trains that can move 32,000 people per hour. What does that compare to as far as freeway travel? That's 18 lanes of traffic in comparison. Okay. And so part of all what we have been doing is hiring the right um, experts to determine, you know, um, what during these studies, what is the economic feasibility, the operation costs, returns on fares and box uh, uh, at the box, uh, peak demand models, CH you know, CHSR uh, uh, connections to other transportation systems to reduce congestion and increase efficiency. So we have done uh, three studies uh, so far, and we're working on the fourth one called the Environmental Impact Statement Study. In 2016, we hired um, a company called Transportation Economics and Management Systems that uh, we registered with um, the federal government um, to with the Federal Transportation Admission uh, Administration to um, get us in their um, understanding that we are doing this corridor and we feel that uh, we need to have uh, recognition by the federal government. And we did a study uh, pertaining to this, which is called the FAST or Fixing America Surface Transportation Act study. And then 2018, they did another study which was called uh, our CHSR prospectus, which uh, basically um, determined that uh, what I said before, that the private sector can be involved 50 to 80% of the funding on this by moving parcel freight, basically leasing the tracks to these multiple com companies that are on the road today, buying equipment and hiring people to get things around. Um, <clears throat> And then lastly, Anchor Moisten Architects have really given us a, a lot of help on, you know, giving us development scenarios uh, for us, new stations and what can be done in these station areas. Okay, next slide, please. The, the station areas uh, are very important to the whole um, understanding of how we grow as a country, how we grow in a region. If we have our transportation systems all there uh, with bicycles and buses and other sources of transportation connected to the high-speed rail, you can set up a great community in these locations surrounding these stations. You can live or be entertained in the same area without having to walk too far, okay? Um, <clears throat> so this is an idea in America as to how many uh, different studies uh, and systems can be developed. Now, uh, TEMS, the Transportation Economics Management Systems, has been involved with a lot of these uh, studies throughout the United States. Next slide, please. We're rated number four as the most important uh, corridor to spend money on. And that's a big deal. Um, Castilla High Speed Rail has been um, in the works and or uh, dreamt of as being a, a great corridor to to uh, have happen uh, since the early 90s. And we have 8.5 million people living in our region and it's not that difficult um, <clears throat> of a region to work in because we only got two, tra uh, two train systems here that exist and, and just two states to work with and, and the pro, uh, province up in British Columbia. Whereas on the East Coast, it's pretty well developed already. You've got multiple um, train companies to deal with and states to deal with. So we feel we have a great opportunity here uh, to get the kind of money necessary to make this happen, especially if we work the private industry to, to, to help us. That gets us to um, the next slide. Um, and this is what we're really talking about. You know, what is our future going to be? 
do we fly over the existing old model of fossil fuel uh, use of getting us around? Or we look at something that uh, our children will look at us and say that they're proud to be um, part of a, of, a, of a country that really is working to improve their environment uh, for their future. Now, National uh, Infrastructure Bank is a very important part that I feel that, that uh, we can begin setting up uh, for this country to depend on uh, high-speed rail to be funded. We can't just depend on Congress to give us pittances uh, every year. Uh, and it'd be a constant battle to, to, to get that. So what we envision is that um, the NIB, National Infrastructure Bank, would be a great resource to help fund what we're trying to do here in the region. Uh, we are uh, ahead of the pack because we have worked so hard on trying to develop this corridor. But right now, um, 25 billion has been set aside in the latest package by Biden. Uh, and 25 billion will, you know, pay for us to get from Portland to, to Seattle, but what about the rest of the country? I mean, we really do need uh, a trillion dollars um, that uh, in America for development of high-speed rail, which the NIB is, is planning. Uh, the total amount would be five billion, or trillion, I'm sorry, uh, for uh, all the types of infrastructures that, that need to be worked on. And that's still below what the need is out there. So um, just to end this, I would like to say that uh, we right now need to be making these decisions that uh, will be for our generations to come. If, do we build a bridge that just replaces an, an existing highway bridge over the Columbia River? Or do we build a bridge over the Columbia River that is really inspirational uh, and it allows for uh, four lanes of cars and two lanes for high-speed rail and two lanes for heavy freight rail um, to be built. We're right sitting right in the middle of this uh, uh, discussion right now because we are doing an EIS study and so is uh, Washington and Oregon uh, regarding the new bridge over the Columbia River. We just want to be able to offer our alternative. Once they uh, see the benefits that we're talking about here in this in this webinar, um, I think they will understand that this is a much better way to go, environmentally efficient wise, uh, fast system, um, 58 minutes to Seattle from Portland. Are you kidding me? Uh, and a lot of people are saying that. That's, are you kidding me? Is that true? Yes, it's true. It's time. We need to be doing this. Uh, and we hope that we get your support uh, calling uh, Congress people to help support uh, high-speed rail, the National Infrastructure Bank. Uh, we really do need your support. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm.